guys welcome back to the channel we thought we'd do a video today slightly different and one that's very long overdue and that's a quick van tour we haven't showed you around obviously bits and pieces of the van have been shown on our various videos but we thought we'd actually do the tour today so we're going to start with the outside enjoy we'll start at the front you have to forgive how dirty it is because it's uh, been driving in the rain down the motorway. We're back at Winchester, it's our last stop before we go back home to Guernsey. And I know this is long overdue, so the uh, door to the driving cab is on the passenger side. That's because we've got the right hand ver drive version. It's based on a Ford Iveco chassis. Uh, it's got twin wheels at the back, it's rear wheel drive, which we found incredibly useful, much better than the front wheel drive that we had before with the Contiki. Just go around the front again. And you'll see we've got side lockers, two steps because it's got a high floor, so we've got lots of underfloor storage really good through garage which i'll show you could you press the button please locking is all automatic which can be a tad annoying but so there's the garage usual arrangement totally full we've got a motorbike we've got two electric bikes, the ramp and all sorts of things in there. Quite frankly, I'm not sure what we'd do without it, but we did buy this deliberately with the uh, large garage. We've got the tow on the back because we tow the car with it. No rear windows, but cameras on the back, both reversing and rear view camera. And the side lockers are really good because we've gone for the slide out option. Let me just show you. So you just pull the peg. This is difficult with one hand, there we go. Masses of space. And actually, it doesn't take up the rest of the locker either. Hopefully, you can see that. Although it's a little dark in there, I've tried to brighten it. There we go. And it goes all the way underneath. We'll show you under the floor from the inside as well shortly. Just push this away. Nice and simple. Locks itself and all of the hatches are alarmed. One other thing we've had it is a very large awning, 5.5 metres long, and it operates electrically. Here it comes. We're only going to take it out a little bit just to show you. It's very big and a great protection from the weather. Obviously, you have to be careful in high winds, as you always do. There it goes, back in. So much easier than the windy thing. Wonderful thick doors on this. We've also got deadlocks that we've... One of the packages, and there's a welcome home package, so... The lights come on when you press a button. There's also keyless entry as well. But let's get inside for now and give you the first look at the interior. So welcome inside. This actually is going to have two purposes. We were a bit concerned about that Land Rover hitting us while he's putting his caravan on site. But seems that he's got it sorted now. So, um, OK, so this is the lounge. We have one long seat here. Usual captain's chairs that turn around, 
table is incredibly flexible. It also opens up into a larger table. And we have all the overhead lockers. Now we've gone for the one with skylights and no overhead bed. There's only two of us. We do not intend to have anybody else. We have no children, so um, we've gone for our own comfort. That means we've also had extra USBs put in the top cupboards so that we can charge all of our camera equipment, computers, phones, etc. without it messing up our living area. And you'll see we've got lovely cupboards which I'll take you into in a moment. And the telly pops up from there. So, our captain's chairs, usual arrangement, they twizzle around. Um, incredibly comfortable as well, so you could put your feet up, watch the telly. Um, then up here, these are really useful cupboards. And as I said, we've had extra USBs fitted, although there are USBs all over, but that really does help. And they're just push closed like that. Some reviewers have said about these shelves here as, as being totally useless. But actually they've got quite a deep lip and we found them so useful. You put your, your notebook or your keys or um, in fact we've got a pair of binoculars in that one so if you see anything you can just grab them straight away. Although the um, covers themselves are very very big. Nice lips on all of the edges so nothing nothing flies out at all and uh, it's not like on an aircraft generally where you say, you know, things might have moved in flight. Be careful when you open the overhead lockers. They're generally fine. Um, obviously, the driving position is here. It's automatic. It's got the eight-speed automatic with the bigger engine. Um, and we've got the reversing camera and a sat-nav um, and all the usual bits and pieces. You'll see the dials down there, they're for the airbags, they're front airbags, it comes with rear airbags. We had those fitted in addition, so whatever the conditions, it seems to make the ride really good. And one of the good things as well is that there's a, a sort of crosswind stabilisation gizmo, I don't know what you call it, but when we were in the south of Spain and we had some terrible crosswinds, it was absolutely fantastic. So... Moving forward, in here we've got the mobile Wi-Fi, which obviously we can't do without. And we've got the satellite controls, we've got the lithium battery level indicators. Um, in fact, everything that's sort of electrical or controls the van is tucked away in there, but it still leaves a full cupboard as well, so it's great. Then we come to the telly. Where's the telly? As I said, where's the telly? Lovely 42 inch flat screen TV. And we have uh, got the satellite as well as the uh, terrestrial, um, well, the free view that comes with, with the telly. But the thing we use most, and really we would think again about getting the satellite, is an Amazon Fire Stick. Um, so we can watch YouTube and it, it it works a treat. It turns it into a smart TV. I'm sure most of you know what an Amazon Fire Stick is, but yeah, really, really useful. Motor is noisy. That's because it's on a sort of worm. But it's only noisy for seconds, so hardly hardly an issue. It's all leather upholstery and it's really nice leather, lovely quality, but we've had it all protected as well. In fact, we've had the whole van protected, ceramic coating on the outside, inside all done as well. And that was at PP Protect and they're uh, near Ashby de la Zouche. Um, I think we mentioned them on one of our first videos, but thumbs up again to, uh, to Richard. Really good job. You can get underneath this seat, so I'll just lift it up. Quite strong springs. <laughs> that gets you into the locker, so there's a locker from outside, um, and still 
there's loads and loads of space in there. Uh, it's useful at times to be able to get into it from inside, especially if it's pouring down with rain, as long as you know what you've put in. You can see it goes back down really nicely. And under here are the seat belts for the travel seats. So it's um, two additional travel seats, so in total four, although we have only got this configured at the moment for two people, the table does drop down and there are infill cushions, so you can actually use it as a four berth. Um, ours are all wrapped up in plastic in our cellar um, because uh, there's only the two of us, as I've already said. There's also a handy little shoe rack in there. It's only got two pairs in there at the moment, but they're Alan's big boots, so uh, obviously it will take more if you want it to. And then I'll show you some more underfloor storage. And um, this one's a really good spot with some really good stuff in it. So this is our underfloor locker. Lift it up. I told you there was good stuff in it. Loads and loads of wine and beer and what have you. It's really quite big, but it also has the controls in here for the water and for draining the water, both fresh and grey, and the lever for emptying the black holding tank. And there's also a switch, which you probably can't see from there, but that then pumps the fresh water through the black tank. I've been asked for corkscrews since well, we started I, motorhoming. Well, when, <laughs> <laughs> when, when we left, I said to Jerry, I said, you've got the corkscrew on? Oh, yes, I've got the corkscrew No problem. She says, where is it? Oh, it should have been right there. Ah. Sorry, we had to cut there because one of our neighbours just came round with a corkscrew. He got a bottle of red wine and a desperate face without a corkscrew. So, <laughs> anyway. We'll carry on. This is very good. We'll show you the other side in a moment, but it adds a little bit of work surface. You can still get through, but it's really, really useful. And then combined with this and everything else in the kitchen, that is really helpful. So this is my kitchen. You've already seen the other side of this. Nice little bin, space for your washing up stuff. Actually, it comes with a hole for two wine, bottles of wine, but two bottles of wine that's not in the fridge. I'll show you the cupboards. I'm on my knees because it's a tight space for a wide for the lens on the camera, so hopefully you get everything. Um, this is the oven. It's an oven and grill. It's extremely good, actually. Um, you don't get this as standard. You have to have this and I'll show you what you do get or, or where it would be in a minute. Isolator switches are here for the gas, all clearly labelled. Nice oven. Well, that's my George Foreman because we do still use that. Lots of cupboard space here. The really nice deep drawers, there's three of them there. Dedicated cutlery drawer there as well. So we've got this nice glass cabinet here, it comes with the glasses. Um, strange number though, they give you three of each, but um, so be it. Um, and this sink, lovely tap that swivels, you've got the flexible thing that comes out. Um, this is a nice touch as well. Just take that off, put that in there. That goes up there as well, so nice big sink use that quite a lot actually um, and you're always wondering where to put your sink cover so that works really well. Top cupboards are also very good, very big, they've got decent height um, as you can see from the kitchen roll in there, I've got kettle and all sorts of things in there so uh, yeah you've got decent height and the other side is also a big uh, cupboard as well. Catago are often known for having coffee machines and this one is no exception. 
drops down. It's just a Nespresso machine, so it's easy to use and really easy to get all the pods for. You've got dedicated cups, both espresso and ordinary coffee cups, and the little pods are there. Um, as I said, this is a big cupboard, and so I've got sort of my dry larder type stuff in there. Let's just push this back up. Three burner hob. All gas, there isn't an electric option. So I do also have an induction hob, so if there's a problem running out of gas, then because we've got an inverter, it's actually an 1850 watt inverter, we can run the induction hob, which has got variable settings so you can keep it below 1850 watts. So that's really very useful. I mentioned that we've gone for the extra cooker. As standard, you get a cooker, sort of a grill affair, which goes where my microwave is, right there. Now I'm five foot two and a tiny little bit, and you can imagine if that was hot food, that would be difficult. It's even sort of dodgy with the microwave, I guess, but I did want a microwave, so um, we've gone for that and the full oven. Usual Dometic automatic three-way fridge, which does the usual trick of opening both ways. And the same with the fridge. Nice big capacity on the fridge. <coughs> and it works very, very well. And then I have a larder unit as well. This catches a little stiff. So that is great. Lots of storage in there. And just to finish off this end of the kitchen, if you want to separate from the rest of the van, from the washroom and from the bedroom, although there are two sets of doors which I'll show you in a moment, you just pull that across. Means you can cook and not have any smells. It's fan, but we've also got reverse cycle air conditioning as well. So uh, that's a Truma Aventa reverse cycle air conditioning, works on a remote control. Um, we have tried it, seems to be very effective. So the control panel and the command centre is up here. That's the usual command centre, um, does your entertainment, puts your water pump on, puts your lights on, got gauges for the water, fresh water, grey water, black water. Um, this is the inverter um, and that obviously takes over if you need 240 volt electricity and you're not hooked up. Usual old wet control system. And these buttons here are for taking the front screen up and down, which again is something that we've yet to show you. Um, let's close that up. The door itself is actually something special. It's a high security door. Um, easy to open as well. It's got a little button here and it opens and it soft closes as well, which might sound a bit gimmicky, but I tell you what, it's so useful, especially if you've got things in your hands. And our last van, the door handle broke. Um, so pressing a button is great. All the light switches are down here. Um, there are innumerable ways that you can light this van. Uh, they dim, we've got rope lights, we've got low voltage lights. It's, uh, it, it, you can have whatever sort of feeling you want. And going further down, as I mentioned on the outside, there's a deadlock there. There's a deadlock also on the passenger door. So, um, and they work both from the inside and also we've got keys to deadlock it from the outside. So, um, nice and secure. While we're still in the door area, we'll just show you the control panel for the self-leveling uh, hydraulic jacks. This is brilliant. You pull up somewhere, you press the on button and you press down and it just does it all for you. And when you leave, you press up and it comes back up. But there's also one additional feature which is really helpful. It's got a tilt on it so that when you're emptying your tanks, to get the last bit out of the tanks, you press that button and it tilts the whole van 
over so it increases the flow. All of the windows have blinds and they also have fly screens as you would expect. We've also got Austrian blinds on the windows which are very pretty but um, not necessary but they're very pretty. But the best blind of all is on the front windscreen. You'll see it's coming down electrically. It comes down, it goes up. It acts as a sun visor. There is a stop so that when you're driving, you can only drop it so far, but it's really useful for the sun. Or you can take it down completely, which you can do at night, obviously, for your privacy and for keeping the cold out. But it also has a privacy setting as well, so that when it's down, you can then drop the top as well, so you can get there it goes. So you can get some light in, but still get privacy, should you wish. Apparently there's some sort of uh, demonstration button you can press that shows it doing all sorts of things. But we've conquered how you do it now, so. And there it goes, on its way up. It's great fun. Obviously it's not instant, but actually it's, it's, it's quite quick really. Especially when you think how awkward it is to pull those two blinds together and get them to click together in the middle and then put them away again. So great option. So we bring you through to the back end of the van now. You've got this lovely big dressing washroom area, starting with the shower. So we've got the handheld part of the shower, which obviously also um, goes on the bracket, but there's also a rainfall shower here, which is wonderful. Um, uh, it's a really nice size shower tray. I don't like getting in there with my shoes on, but you can see how big it is. It's, it's great. You don't knock yourself or anything. It's really good. And then we've got a nice sink here. Um, nice sink, nice tap, again a swivel tap, soap holder, we've got two smug holders, um, electrical socket for your hair dryer, lots of light switches, great mirror for making up and lots of storage space both sides and under the sink are three large drawers which this sort of stuff we never knew where to put in our previous vans. We perhaps had one little cupboard. On this, we've got three, which is absolutely terrific. You really don't want to use the showers on site most of the time because this is such a nice area. And as you'll see in a moment, on the other side, we have a separate toilet compartment and also a really nice big wardrobe. So you're all self-contained and you can close it off, which we'll show you from the other direction because it's got full length mirrors on the doors as well. On the other side of the washroom dressing room is the wardrobe. Not sure you can see into that from there. We'll do the... Uh... So this is the wardrobe, plenty of space even for me just give you a look inside obviously automatic lights in there two hanging rails there are straps on the side there's a shelf there if you wanted to put a shelf in instead of two hanging and the heater pipes go through it as well so everything stays nice and warm and let's put some light on in there and in the toilet compartment, there's the heated towel rail and the controls for the toilet, which is a proper ceramic loo with a macerator and a holding tank. We have done a video on using a holding tank and how you empty it, so go back and have a look at that if you're interested. Um, can thoroughly recommend it. In fact, I'd say probably of everything we've put on this extra, this ceramic toilet arrangement has got to be one of the best. There's still more wardrobe space underneath both beds. 
We keep our coats in there. As well, you can see a couple of bottles of whiskey, but you've got to keep that somewhere, haven't you? Um, they also lift if you want to gain access from the top. Uh, so you can do that quite easily. Same arrangement on both sides. Steps up to the bed in the middle. These pull out if you want to make the bed into a full bed and that pulls out and there's an infill cushion that goes in. Um, but we actually like it the way it is. One final thing in the washroom, which is so helpful. Well, it is if you're vain like me. And that's full length mirrors, not just one. They're clipped, so you have to undo the clips, but two, and that one's slightly larger than that one. It also means you can close this off into an entirely self-contained area. So let's put them back. They do have clips that lock in automatically, but then there's also a Prestered arrangement, which is uh, for travel safety. So, into the bedroom. They are very long beds. I think they're six foot six. Um, and it's the German bed layout. So we've got a big infill cushion here. And as I've just mentioned, you can pull it out to make it into a bigger bed and the steps move forward so you're not losing the easy access to get into bed at night. Loads of storage all the way around. Lots of space. And at the back as well. Lots and lots of room. Switches here that control various lights and there's also a switch which puts lights on, on the floor, little pin lights, so if you get up in the middle of the night, you can actually see where you're going. Open shelving on the corners. Um, not tremendously useful, that, because the entrance to each of the shelves is quite narrow, but handy for putting um, bits and pieces there, or your nighty, your jamas, that sort of thing. Nice skylight again, and again, insect screens and all the uh, the usual. But one further thing to show you in the bedroom is the television. This is the television. 32 inch television, flat screen, remote control and you can both lay down and watch the news as you snooze. Another good idea on this is there's central locking of all the cupboards and the cabinet. So you just press that, everything is locked. So none of this driving along and hearing your cutlery drawer fall out. It's all one button. When it's not safe, the red light shows. So that means they're now all open and capable of being used. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're looking for a Cotago, I hope it was useful to you as well. Just to let you know, the model is a Cotago Chic S Plus. It's on an Iveco chassis with twin wheels at the back, rear wheel drive, automatic. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Shh. <laughs>